feature presentation. Fawn, Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. I wanted to start off with the animation style and ask you uh, specifically, how does it differ from previous uh, Walt Disney animation productions? And can you talk a little bit about the difficulty in coming up with the design? Because it is such a beautiful hybrid of of painterly aesthetic, but also that 3D animation that we've come accustomed to loving with Disney movies in the last 20 years or so. Yeah, um, it's two things, right? So the first part of the watercolor look is to um, to refer back to the legacy of the studio dated back to when Walt started working on um, Snow White, and he was inspired by that watercolor illustration style at the time. And we're combining that with the technology that we have now at the studio in the CGI animation in terms of how we are able to navigate through the scene, how we shoot the movie, the flexibility of the medium and technology. Is there a character or a moment that you were developing early on where you found that you really had the design and the style down pat? Because it does seem like something that does take quite a lot of time and, and effort and, and a collaboration process. We are really purposeful about our framing. And we have um, the themes of the movie and different themes will apply to different type of camera movement. I don't want to get too geeky about it. No, please do. Please do. I, I think that's like the, the most exciting stuff, the way that the camera moves. And I think a lot of people take for granted, you know, direction and storyboarding. And I was very curious because in a past interview, you talked about clarity. And for somebody that is coming from a background of being um, a story artist and head of story, and now making their directorial debut, I was curious if that clarity becomes clearer when you're looking at the big picture as, as a filmmaker. Yeah, coming into this project, we are collaborating with um, the same uh, cinematography team that I work with on Raya. So knowing them already, I know that they have their specific method dividing up into different themes when they shoot a movie. So I went to them early on and I say, I know you always think about this and I would love to know it and collaborate it with you early so we can really bring this look to life, right? So we divided wish into uh, the imagination side that was represented by Star and the control and power side that is represented by Magnifico. And in the middle, there's a status quo of people who do not know the truth of this kingdom and is not yet activated to take action. So it's three different philosophy on how we shoot this movie. And was it always interesting finding a balance between that or kind of finding you know, the, the, the perspective of things with these characters and with the world that you were creating? For sure, because we're so used to be able to do whatever we like in the CGI format, right? Move the camera freely. In this case, when it's about control and power, you keep the camera still and let, the pe let people be able to take in that cinemascope aspect ratio that is so beautiful and be able to be in that still moment and feeling the restriction of the framing. I thought it was fascinating when you, you would choose the camera on Magnifico to put him center when he was powerful. But as he sort of starts to lose power, he's not quite centered in the frame. So it's subtle things like that that evoke a feeling in the audience that I think is great. Well, it's, it's like that classic like low angle, high angle, where you see a character in a different way and a different perspective as the story evolves and how the characters evolve. And you could see that in the footage that you were very kind to show us. And I'm very curious, um, Peter, you know, we live in a time where everything is so accessible when it comes to streaming and, you know, just the, the availability. Why is it important for audiences to see Wish in theaters and not wait for it on Disney Plus? Uh, to me, there's so many reasons. One is the aspect ratio, the cinemascope. This, this is meant to be experienced on the big screen. Uh, to me, it's the musical element of it, the, 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 and the emotion of this movie. It's meant to be shared not only with your family, but as an experience in the theater with an audience. Uh, everything gets elevated uh, to us uh, when you watch the movie in the theater. Did the aspect ratio change your approach to the animation style in terms of what was in the frame and how the characters move within it? There's a lot more space horizontally, so that kind of poses the challenge on how we want to, to you know, people will kind of refer to what they were used to and we're like, no, 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 on this film, we are doing something different here. And that span over different departments from story, layout, environment, visual development, down to lighting on how we will do things differently this time to achieve this look. 
Peter, I, I was curious to ask you because it's, it's such a fascinating world we live in when it comes to marketing and advertising a movie and getting a film out there early. There are so many different approaches to it. I mean, you look at Miyazaki right now with The Boy and the Heron, and, and there's really almost no marketing to it. When it comes to Wish, because this is an original story and it's not based on previous IP or a sequel, how important is it to get a story like this or to, you know, present it to the media to have this conversation? I think, uh, I think it's very important and we're very confident about the movie and so we want to share it. We want to even share the fact that we have a villain in the movie. As you know, many times that, that gets hidden or that's a spoiler. Um, uh, it, it, but we like, like showing how he evolves. He's charming and charismatic, but he also has another side to him. Uh, so uh, 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 we hope to share more. Um, I think uh, our marketing campaign will reveal more as we get closer and build s some excitement and some momentum. Also, it is an original story, but there's also the nostalgia aspect of it and, and the, the feeling that it evokes uh, that I think everyone has uh, experienced as they've watched Disney movies over the generations that we also want to bring into the, into the uh, experience. Was there a moment while you, I mean, obviously the film, you know, is still in production and will probably be being fixed or finished by you know the time November comes around but was there a moment while you were making this movie where you either of you got wrapped up in the story or felt that moment of just pure joy watching what you had made I remember the moment I listened to Emma Star song for the first time that Julian and, and Ben brought to the meeting and I just feel so emotional on a song that is so joyful I was like what is going on right now and I love the uh, the vibe that you know you're a star I'm a star everyone is affirming each other that within that just there, there's this incredible power that is essentially your wish that will get you work toward your dream for me it was one of the sh scenes we shared with you today where Magnifico and Asha our protagonist and antagonist seem to have the same point of view on protecting the wishes and yet you we know where the movie is going after that and I can't recall another film and, and Jen Lee and Allison wrote wrote the pages, uh, and it was fascinating to have the two characters almost in alignment, at least at one point in the film. And you can be sympathetic towards King Magnifico Correct. as well, where you know he's not just simply a cardboard cutout villain. There's Correct. more complications mm -hmm. to that, and I'm sure that'll be explored even deeper. Um, I was just curious, the, the world of animation seems to be changing so much and over the last 10 years. Peter, you've been working at Disney since 1995. That's almost 30 years. Can you talk about how it, uh, animation has influenced your work outside of Disney? And especially in the last 10 years, you've had people like Guillermo del Toro really hit home the fact that you know animation is a medium and not a genre. And you have talked about that before as well. Yeah, it's, it's very important. We make the films. These are films. These are films for everyone. We're not making films just for children, just for families. It, 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 so we want films that people can relate to, that they can um, uh, uh, kind of expand their 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 thinking. Absolutely. Well, I have to I have to wrap with you too. But um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, and uh, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks.